Okay, so welcome back. And today we're going to continue on with graphs of logarithmic uh, functions. But before we actually get into the graphing part, we're going to talk about domain. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the domain or review the domain of the exponential function. So if we have an exponential function here, we know from previous discussions that the domain is all real numbers, right? So we know that the domain here is all real numbers or written like that in interval notation, okay? And the range is all positive real numbers. So we could say uh, y is greater than zero or again, we can use uh, zero to positive infinity, okay? Now, with logs, remember, logarithmic functions are inverse functions of exponential functions. So, for the domain and range of an exponential function, um, for the domain and range of a logarithmic function, it's going to be the domain and range of the exponential function switched. So, we know that the domain of a logarithmic function is going to be the range of the exponential function. So this is going to be now zero to infinity. So that means the domain of a function, of a logarithmic function has to be all uh, positive real, right? And the range can be anything. So this can go from negative infinity to positive infinity. And so again, if you look at the graph of the two. So I'm going to just sketch a graph. So here's 0, 1, 1. So now on an exponential, again I'm assuming b is positive, not equal to 1, and so I'm going to assume that this is increasing. So this is going to do something like this. Now a logarithmic function is going to do something like this. And so based on the graph, now here's the thing, remember, Inverse functions are reflections across the y equals x key, the identity function. Okay, so notice that this if you reflect it across the identity function y, uh, y equals x, you get the reflection, okay? My, my artistic skills notwithstanding, okay? Um, so, that's an, a visual for you to see that looking at the domain and range of the exponential function is switched when you're looking at the logarithmic function. Okay, now, just as with uh, exponential functions, transformations affect, can affect the domain and range. So similarly with um, logarithmic functions, transformations can also affect the domain and range. Oh, and by the way, we also, again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. Okay, so again, transformations can also affect that as well. Um, what else uh, do I want to say? Okay, so what we're going to do is how do you determine the domain and range? Now, so we're going to look at this, right? For logarithm, the argument, right? So x value, the x here has to be positive. That means you cannot take the log of a negative number. So that means if you want to solve and find out what 
the domain is of a transformed log function, then you're going to have to look at the argument here and, and make sure that um, you solve for x such that x is greater than, uh, such that the argument is greater than or equal to zero. So here, for x, this is the domain. But what if we have some sort of transformation? For example, what if we start with this? What if we have that? And we say, okay, well, we want to know what the domain of this function is. Well, we know that the argument has to be what? It has to be a positive real number. It has to be larger than zero. Okay? And so how do you do that? Well, you have to set up an inequality. Okay? So we're going to take this argument. We need to solve for x. Okay, so what values of x will make this thing a positive real number? Well, the way we do that is we first set up the inequality. We have to set this as an inequality saying, okay, we want to know what values of x such that x, uh, 2x minus 3 is greater than 0 because that's what we need for the domain. So now all we do is solve this inequality the way we would solve any inequality, uh, just like an equation, right? So I'm going to add 3 to both sides, and so I'm going to get 2x is greater than 3, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and so I get x is greater than 3 halves, and there's your domain. So now I know that the domain is all x, such that x is greater than 3 halves, or if you want to write it as an interval notation, you would write 3 halves, so parenthesis 3 halves, comma, infinity. Okay, and so those are the steps. So one, you got to set the inequality showing that the argument is greater than zero. Two, solve for x. And then three, write the domain in interval notation. Okay, like I did right here. And that's it. Um, let's see here. Okay, so when we come back, we'll do a couple of examples and move on. Have a great day.